Hello and welcome to today's webcast, Let's Build Your MSU Optimization Plan, brought to you by RSD. My name is Casey Smith and on behalf of SHARE Headquarters, I would like to thank you for joining us today. SHARE is pleased to continue our webinar programming with this informative and educational event. Please note that the presentation slides and the recording will be available post-webcast at SHARE.org. Today's presenters are Craig Hilburn and Mark Perillo. Craig Hilburn is a Technical Account Manager at RSD and has over 30 years in mainframe IT technical and managerial leadership roles. Areas of experience and expertise are focused in information and data management from concept to implementation. Specialties include enterprise output and print management, records management, compliance, and legal discovery and hold processes. Currently working with RSD as a Technical Account Manager, the focus of his career has been with Fortune 500 organizations. Mark Perillo is a Technical Account Manager at RSD with the goal to build better and stronger business relationships with customers by providing a superior product with superior support. Mark previously worked at IBM providing technical sales support for Z Systems modernization. He also worked at IBM Global Services supporting many automation and support initiatives primarily for the Hartford account at IBM. Mark spent most of his professional career at the Hartford Financial Services Group as an application developer, systems programmer, and support specialist in many areas of the company, focusing on ZVM and ZOS solutions and integrating evolving technologies into the corporate infrastructure. We encourage you to submit questions throughout the event via the Q&A box on your webinar toolbar. These will be addressed at the end of the presentation. I would like to now turn over the webinar to today's presenter. Please go ahead, Craig. Thanks. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Casey. And thank you, everyone, for joining our discussion and demo of ZTRIM Operations Analytics. As Casey mentioned, my name is Craig Hilburn, and I would like to introduce Mark Perillo. Mark? Thanks, Craig. Uh, thank you for attending the webinar. I'll be doing the demo with you a little later, and I'm very happy to be here with you. Back to you, Craig. Thanks. Mark and I are technical account managers at RSD, and we work directly with organization teams that implement RSD software solutions. The focus in the session today is really twofold. How can you use mainframe performance analysis reporting to communicate with and have an impact on your organization? And an exciting feature now available in ZTRIM Operations Analytics that allows the planning of tangible cost optimization initiatives directly using the tool so that you can substantiate those, uh, that information with your organization. ZTRIM Operations Analytics from RSD is the result of a two-year collaboration with a community of mainframe performance experts. These experts primarily consult with major banks and insurance companies around the world. Now let's look briefly at our agenda. Give you an idea of where we're going. We'll talk about mainframe modernization, just at a high level. We'll talk about Z-Term operations and analytics in general. And then, as Mark said, we'll do the live product demo. This is where Mark will be actually using the product live. And then we'll talk about some next steps. What we know about mainframe uh, cost is uh, recently I had the opportunity to attend a Gartner conference. Some of you may have uh, attended Gartner conferences in the past. There was really some compelling results from a survey in one of the sessions that I attended. A full 76% of the respondents indicated their mainframe processing will remain steady or grow in the next 12 to 18 months. How do you think this will affect their cost for their organization? Another important statistic is we know 70% of critical business workload is processed by mainframe platforms globally. This yields a 1.5 million transaction processed um, uh, daily uh, globally on these platforms. The mainframe platform is a critical component of many business infrastructures, yet there are some challenges. It cannot be often difficult to share meaningful metrics about the system with the business. Controlling costs remains very important and a priority. And as Gartner reports, the IT and business partnership is in a critical state and needs attention and development. This was the focus of probably 50% of the sessions at that Gartner Summit. Gartner modernization initiatives make some re specific recommendations about those processes. You should first of all assess applications for selective migration off-platform. 
assess workload placement to gain efficiencies and optimization, and conduct an application rationalization initiative for modernization, and use those savings to fund dig digital initiatives for the business. But how do you make these decisions? What data and information are available to make such critical business decisions? Well, we want to talk about optimizing mainframe costs and accelerating modernization. Information alone is not sufficient. It's access to meaningful information that will facilitate the conversation across stakeholder groups and enable optimization and modernization. To focus on cost optimization, ZTRIM allows you to analyze mainframe consumption using key performance indicator metrics built into the product, predefined, so that you can gain immediate insight for decision making. It's easy to use. We provide access to consumption inf information to any stakeholder in one click. And as we will demonstrate today, you can interact with the data as you analyze and plan. And finally, as we mentioned earlier, communication. Easily communicate mainframe consumption across um, data across the organization and facilitate a stronger partnership between IT and business leaders using meaningful dashboards. Starting any modernization uh, initiative takes, takes action. Modernization and implementation of digital business requires a partnership between all stakeholders in the business. We all know that. And for that scope of initiative, sharing meaningful, understandable data is most important. In a research note on modernization initiatives by Gartner's Thomas Klinek that we were able to participate in, Klinek made two important points. Pursue application rationalization to align the application portfolio with business processes and strategies. Very important. Secondly, focus on tools that provide meaningful communication to all stakeholders, particularly IT and business units, as modernization initiatives begin. The research note included a recommendation for ZTRIM by Thomas Act as the tool to enable organizations to take these specific actions. And of course, we're all concerned with measurable outcomes. We're focused on metrics and results. Currently, uh, organizations that are benefiting from ZTRIM operations analytics include insurance companies, financial firms, and state agencies. And across Europe, we have major banks that are benefiting from um, the results of ZTRIM. What are we doing to help? Well, we propose you will actually realize a 300% ROI in nine months. ZTRIM is easy to purchase. We a subscription pricing model per CPC, price per CPC, and no additional cost for the size or anything else or the amount of data that you're storing. What we would ask is that, uh, let us do a one-hour demo with your data. It's very compelling. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And the product actually implements in one day. You can be up and running and uh, reviewing your consumption information in one day. Now let's talk about the over, uh, kind of an overview of ZTRIM architecture. Uh, we use SMF records. Uh, everybody's familiar with those or should be. We're using 30, 70, 72, and 89. You can easily uh, pull those records using uh, the man files or the IFA SMF DL for log stream. Basically is what we're doing. We're just transferring that data off platform so that we are not contributing to MSU consumption. It's transferred to Linux server and ingested and grouped in Elasticsearch to support primary consumption KPIs predefined in the product. As I mentioned, it's built on Elasticsearch, and if you're not familiar with that uh, product, I would encourage you to uh, Google Verizon and Elasticsearch. There's a compelling YouTube video by their director uh, of one of their security organizations that is using an Elasticsearch repository storing over 650 billion documents. It's really an entertaining and compelling story. He does a good job. Also, the dashboards listed are pre-configured and delivered with the product. They're ready to be used by your stakeholders and are great examples to model other dashboards that may be required. And at this point, Mark, I'll turn things back over to you for the product demo. Thank you, Craig. Uh, this will just be one click. Here we go. So greetings. And welcome to the ZTRIM Operations Analytics Demo. I'm Mark Perillo, Technical Account Manager at RSD, and I'll be running the demo. We're demoing ZTRIM Operations Analytics version 1.2. I'm contacting the server via my Chrome browser, and you received an overview of this environment in the webinar presentation. 
For reference, we'll be using a few common acronyms and terms I just want to mention here. We'll be talking about the R4H, or the rolling four-hour average, that is used by IBM in their SCRT, subcapacity reporting tool, to calculate your MLC, or your monthly license charge, for eligible mainframe product pricing. The MLC is measured in MSUs, or million service units. Z-Term Operations Analytics provides stakeholders information about the system by bundling related KPIs, or key performance indicators, into dashboards or collections of KPIs that provide specific information. As you can see on the screen here, under the dashboard pull-down, these first four dashboards listed are the ones that are included with the product as an out-of-the-box feature. These four are the Business Application Managers dashboard, the, I, the Director dashboard, the IT Operations Manager dashboard, and the IT Performance Capacity Managers dashboard. Technical and non-technical folks alike should have few problems using these dashboards. They're very intuitive. They will get insights into the resource consumption that contributes to your rolling four-hour average. I'm going to review two dashboards in this demo, the Director dashboard and the Business Application Managers dashboard. They serve two very different stakeholders and are good examples for dashboards. The Business Application Managers dashboard will actually be used to do an MSU optimization, which is a new feature with ZTrim Operations Analytics version 1.2. So starting with the Director dashboard, this dashboard has six KPIs. We'll cover the first four in this demo. Right now we're actually looking at the R4H peaks, giving us the daily R4H for all of our systems on the machine or CPC. You notice that our peak this month occurred on the 5th and the 12th of February. Each entry in the graph gives a day's total, and this KPI is presented as the full width of the screen. I'm going to scroll down now to the next KPI, the R4H peaks by entity. We'll see we have the same peaks in the same days, but the consumption is actually shown by entity. This is achieved by grouping together the LPARs running on our systems into meaningful groups that make sense to the business people. Our demo system groups are determined by lines of business in a financial company. Okay, both of the first two KPIs we're looking at February 2nd to February 20th. The next KPI is the R4H analysis by workload type. This is giving us one day's worth, which happens to be yesterday, showing the breakdown of the WL components of batch, transaction processing, and other. And it shows us when these workloads are busy and how many MSUs are consumed during the day relative to the R4H, which is the line going across in red. The last KPI that we'll cover in this dashboard is the MSU usage for the last 13 months by entity. And this KPI gives us a big picture for all of our entities running monthly, and it gives us the ability to size the system workloads over 13 months and look at their overall contributions to the MSU usage. Okay, so that completes our review of this dashboard. We'll be spending the rest of our time in the Business Application Managers dashboard. And the first thing you'll notice is that the first two KPIs that we're looking at, the R4H peaks and the R4H peaks by entity, are the same ones that we saw previously. The only difference is they're shown here side by side as opposed to full width. Spoiler alert here, there are some KPIs that are actually found in more than one dashboard. This allows us to have some common focal points when we start talking between stakeholders. Okay, well, we've already reviewed these first two KPIs. If we go down a little further, these are the KPIs that will help us do an MSU optimization. The R4H analysis by application provides MSU consumption for the applications that are running on the system. And you can see the top consumers KPI to the right, which is a complement. And it allows you to group together the different job names to give a meaningful category for the analysis on the left. In our particular example here, we've actually already done an optimization for the HR application, which is shown here in purple. It's a small application workload, but it is occurring during our peak. We'll get more information on that later. Now scrolling down, our next two KPRs are the R4H analysis by program category and the top programs that make that up. As before, the KPI on the right allows us to map the appropriate programs into appropriate categories so we can get meaningful groups of program products that are often run on the same system. 
We've already added an MSU optimization for our EOS view, RSD software for online viewing, that's shown here in yellow. It's a small workload that contributes to the R4H peak, and therefore it's a good candidate for an optimization. In this demo, we're going to be looking at a straightforward solution to reduce the R4H. Let me expand this KPI. The IBM TDS batch job is running every day from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. In this time frame, it is contributing to the R4H. We're going to reschedule this workload to start at midnight, and it should complete by about 6 a.m. Excluding TDS here on the graph shows that this change could give us a simulated R4H savings of 12 MSUs. We can save money just by changing our schedule once we understand our MSU consumption and how the different workloads contribute. At this time, with this TDS selected, the Add MSU Optimization button is available. This window is going to allow me to basically add an optimization to the system, which we'll look at shortly. So it's going to be a schedule change. I cannot type today. Okay, there's a peak impact of 12 MSUs. I'm going to say that we're going to realize a 6 MSU savings. This is only a scheduling change, so I'm going to be optimistic and say it'll be two months for us to implement this change. And the frequency is going to be monthly. It's going to contribute every day for the monthly uh, rolling four-hour average. Once all these fields are filled in, the Submit button is available, and we've actually got an optimization added to the system. Okay, so that's how we do an MSU optimization. We're going to finish up by going to the actual uh, settings and administration page within ZTrim to look at this optimization. Okay, looking here on the system, we'll see there are actually three optimizations. The first two that were already in the system that I mentioned, the HR application and EOS view. The HR application is actually a programming change. It's going to take seven months to implement. It's being done by the business, and we're going to see a savings of two MSUs. Our EOS view change is going to save us six MSUs. It will take three months to implement. It's going to be achieved by running the EOS bridge software to offload that viewing workload to an EOS 360 for open systems environment where it won't contribute to the rolling four-hour average. If you look at our optimization, the schedule change, the first thing we notice is there's not an owner assigned. This will be done by our schedulers. I'm going to actually put it in for IT. So we now have three optimizations on our system. We're almost done. At this point, I want to quickly go to inputs and show that currently in our environment, we have one CPC, we're dealing in US dollars, but we have an MSU annual cost of $15,000 per MSU per year. I'm going to go back to optimizations and actually show the amounts here. That's how they're derived. So we can see that these changes are going to um, make substantial yearly savings to our environment when they're implemented. To enforce this, I'm going to go to our summary and also show amounts. And we'll see that initially, after the first month, one of the optimizations are in place, we don't see any MSU savings. But within six months, we're up to saving 41 MSUs, if our projections are correct. And within two years, we've projected saving 292 MSUs. If we actually do Well, we had them shown on the far right. We'll see this is a savings of over $350,000 just by putting these optimizations in place, which is a huge savings and is basically attributed to this tooling giving you the capability of understanding the MSU optimizations that can be done and how to uh, put them into the system and realize the savings. At this time, if you have people that aren't using ZTrim but need this information, you can also send this report out. You can export it to a PDF, and they will get these three summary screens that we just showed. 
delivered to them as a PDF. Okay, that was a brief demo highlighting some of the capabilities. We're going to get back to the presentation. We'll have a little time for uh, questions later. And thank you so much for your attention. Uh, back to you, Craig. Thank, thanks, Mark. Um, now let's take a few moments to summarize a few important points. Uh, I know we've gone through a lot of information both in the presentation and in the demo. Um, but as Mark demonstrated, Z-Term Operations Analytics uses well-known KPIs for metrics associated with reporting the rolling four-hour average, the peak, as well as uh, MSU consumption specifically. This is a tr strategic product decision by a RSD as these are compelling and uh, primarily primary uh, used KPIs. Provides reporting on various as aspects of resource consumption. Mark clearly demonstrated that in the product. You can configure batch window cutoffs, cutoffs as well. We didn't have time to cover that today, but you can use Z-Term Operations Analytics to define and set uh, batch window cutoffs for daily SLA tracking, for instance, for an operations manager. Create meaningful dashboards for stakeholders from the indisputable source of system data, the SMF records. You can exploit user subscriptions as well to automate distribution of information to your stakeholders. And you can automate those and you can schedule those so the information will be distributed to your important stakeholders and they'll have the reports and the information available where they will actually interact with the data. And as we mentioned, interacting with the data using multiple filters and analysis dimensions. Uh, they can look at it by entity, workload, application, LPAR, report classes. I mean, we showed just in that brief demo several uh, of the capabilities. And then identify specific optimization opportunities using the analysis from ZTrim to actually create a plan for those initiatives. And generate the reporting data to substantiate optimization and initiatives for your organization and actually creating an artifact that you can take forward for the project. Now let's talk about next steps. We promise to come back to that in the agenda. There are some basic questions business and um, infrastructure and operations leaders really are asking, right? What is running on the mainframe? How is it grouped? What is the true consumption? How is available system capacity used by system, by entity, by application, by workload? And what is the impact of optimizing consumption on specific workloads? And where can I find savings? And where can, can I find opportunities to fund other initiatives? The most compelling demo is seeing SMF data from your system in ZTrim. It's not unusual for clients to express surprise by something they see about their systems that was uh, unexpected and have additional questions to discuss. Mark and I have both experienced this as we've uh, done product demos using uh, customer data. And uh, inevitably, they start focusing in, a, in on one thing and start asking specific questions about, well, well why is that like that? So, well, it's an interesting question. Let's talk about it. Use the SCRT to identify the R4HA peak, perhaps the peak month, if you have certain types of processing and you know that you have a really high month that you process. Pull your SMF records for that one month period and ensure that period includes, you know, one of your typical peaks. Provide the SMF file to us and we will schedule a Z-Trim demo using your data. And if you have questions, Mark and I can also provide a specification sheet with a little bit more information. We also have examples of uh, you know, specific jobs you can run to pull those SMF records separately, those kinds of things. <clears throat> uh, one other ask is we would like uh, to invite you to take our survey. You can uh, visit us at www.rsd.com slash survey and take our survey. Uh, we promise to give you a nice uh, gift card. We promise it's not a gift card for RSD products. Uh, <laughs> it is a gift card. It's an Amazon gift card. So, uh, you know, you can go forth and, uh, I don't know, uh, buy a nice gift for yourself uh, of your choice. And then also we'd like to invite you to visit us at Share Phoenix. We'll be in booth 413. Uh, would love to have you come by and meet uh, myself, and I'll have a couple of my colleagues with me. Uh, we will have ZTrim up and running, and you can certainly interact with it if you want, and we'll sit down with you and kind of let you interact with the data and actually see the things live that Mark was uh, showing today. 
And with that, I think we are ready to turn this back over to Casey and see if there are any questions. Absolutely. And we had a couple questions come in. So the first one is, instead of a Linux server, can you offload to a Z Linux instance? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, we are currently working on uh, on supporting the Linux and Z server, and you have two way of addressing this. As of today, what we support is partially, so you you have the ingester running on Linux and Z, and you, you can uh, address an Elasticsearch that is running on open system. But we are still working on improving this, and in order to provide full coverage on Linux and Z. Yeah, this is a common question, and we are certainly working with the uh, different organizations that we need to to kind of make that happen and try to see what attention we can get to it and move it forward. Um, it's this discussions specifically, as Guy mentioned, kind of uh, relate to Elasticsearch. So our product will run anywhere. I mean, we're on that platform without any problem, but yeah. It, uh, continue to work on that. So we're working, uh, yeah, so like you said, in that model, we can certainly do that. Okay, great. Um, another question, how is this better than just using hardware capping? So I would say, and Mark jumped in there, I would say, you know, with hardware capping, the thing about it is it gives you less flexibility uh, for your environment and for your business, right? Your it, hardware capping is an artificial cap, really. And you're you are pulling things, you're making business decisions or IT decisions. Oftentimes you're not making really good business decisions when you're doing hardware capping uh, related to revenue streams and things like that. Um, I would say insight into the information might help you maybe manage those caps better as well. Mark, yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing with hardware capping is you're trying to limit the use of resources and only so much can be done and ultimately workloads are, aren't going to finish as quickly or you're going to elongate your batch window or run into some other uh, competition for resources as that cap gets reinforced. The, the whole idea behind DTRIM is giving you the uh, analytics, the capability to see how your R4H, how you're hitting that peak and what resources you can use and how you can use the KPIs to intelligently uh, re-architect your running environment. So you don't need a hardware cap to enforce the R4H. You've, you've got all your metrics in place. Right, and I would say that the, the, the thing that it gives you is some power and insight into how to better serve the business rather than just you know creating this hardware cap and saying, well, okay, these parts of the business, you're kind of making decisions, right? Okay, this part of the business is going to suffer or this one is, whereas this would give you more insight into really manipulating those in a more um, organic way, I guess you would say. Yeah, hardware cap is a severe solution to a problem where you're trying to right. handle, handle your size and growth and control costs. Zetrium gives you a much more sophisticated, much more intuitive, much more mature interface to intelligently work with your workload to keep those costs down. Mm -hmm. All right, um, another question. What is the price of ZTrim Operations Analytics? So I guess I can take a stab at that. Uh, Mark and I are not the sales team, but as I mentioned, it's per CPC. Uh, it is, there's no cost for you know, numbers of LPARs on that CPC or anything else. It's per CPC, and we don't care about how much data that you ingest in there either or store. Um, per CPC, and it's uh, $60,000 for a subscription model and we asked for a you know three year commitment on the subscription. Okay, and then we just had another question come in. Um, this looks like more of a comment, but if you have any input that would be great. A company has to be able to identify applications to workload, PGMs, jobs, CICS trans, etc. Otherwise they won't know what business is using the CPU. Not all companies have this granularity of business function. Also, some programs, trans, et cetera, are used for multiple business functions. Distinguishing between them may not be possible. Uh, so I guess they're, they're talking about the way we had the entities lined up in the those lines of business and separating those. Um, yeah, I don't, 
Uh, Guy, do you want to take a stab at maybe addressing that? Let me, so actually this is the full purpose of ZTREM is that you have different way to uh, split the, the consumption. You can do it per business entity by regrouping uh, a certain amount of helper and assigning uh, business entity names that are understandable by the business. You can uh, regroup them per program name or you can regroup them per job names. Sure. And on the job names, you can uh, rebuild, uh, provide a, uh, rebuild your application based on this different characteristic of the job name in order to enable the team in charge of the mainframe to explain and to educate the business on how much each of the business activity is uh, impacting the R4H and therefore, as uh, Craig mentioned, align your business priority with your resource allocations. Right, so that granularity that's uh, inherent in Zetrim uh, for the, you know, war obviously the application workload program, but all the way down to the job name, where you can do that mapping, the, obviously in the demo we had things pre-mapped, uh, as you observed, you know, whoever asked the question observed keenly, um, but obviously you can, we just didn't have time to show how you do the mappings, but it is in there so that you can group those, so you could group by job name, as Guy mentioned, for instance, which would be in many organizations would be a typical way to group things together by, you know, entities, you know, internal entities within the organization. Yeah, this is Mark. Even with like program products, like there are a lot of uh, monitors that have 20 different uh, jobs that are running to do that. The KPIs allow you to group all those together to map them as one entity name so you can logically assign all the resources to a, a full-blown product that you would want to. So you have a lot of capabilities within Zetrim. Right, with the mapping. With and, to conclude, and to conclude, we have also the capacity, for example, to leverage the report class that are defined right. in the ULM and to represent the consumption for report classes. So the full focus of Zetrim is really to enable the mainframe team to communicate and to explain what's happening on the mainframe to non-technical teams. Right, and based on, you know, the structure of your business. Yeah. So there's flexibility there, you know, based on how your business is structured. Yeah, the intent is to group together resource consumption any way that makes sense to any of the stakeholders so it can be shared and uh, you can move forward with the plan. Right. Oh. Uh, other questions, Casey? Um, just a couple more. How long does it take to install this solution? Yeah, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, we can actually install it in one day. Uh, it's very easy to install. It comes as a, uh, like if you're going to install it in a VM or in Linux, we can just deliver the package. We can step you through it. Uh, Guy has a compelling story where they, they uh, I don't remember what happened at the site, but there was, the, they didn't have a technical a particularly technical person there and so they actually did it online and walked them through <laughs> installing the product and and showed them how to use it and they had them up and running in a day so we're uh, pretty proud of that excited about it <laughs> yeah that's awesome um a couple more questions how long before i can start getting the reports yeah I, so as Really, the the thing that for Zetrim that's predicated on right is having the SMF records ingested. So once the product is up and running and you've transferred those SMF records and they're ingested and grouped and processed, um, you can start running it. So uh, I mean, literally, that's why we that's what we say when we you have it installed in a day. We don't only mean that it's actually uh, just installed and sitting there, but our expectation would be that you would be able to install it. Uh, in just at least some subset, you know, maybe a few days of records or whatever, and get them ingested, and you would you would be using the product the same day. You would be using those dashboards. The dashboards that um, Mark demonstrated, uh, the director dashboard and the business application manager dashboard, and then there are two others. There's a performance and capacity manager's dashboard, and then an operations manager dashboard. Those four dashboards are all delivered with the product. So you could already experience the dashboards and then start pulling things around uh, once you have your SMF uh, records ingested and uh, grouped. All right, and then one more question. What is your plan to extend your KPIs coverage? Oh, 
<laughs> so I I guess we can share the Mark. Do you want to share the short term roadmap, or how do we want to work that? Well, initially we're going to have report classes and report class mapping coming up with KPIs, and we have a, an exciting new offering for Kicks, which is a, a specific feature that you would have to order with the product. It's, it's not built in. Guy, do you want to go over the? Um... So well, today you have the capacity to uh, to identify the consumption of each of the program and, uh, and, uh, and jobs, so you have a first overview of how much your Kix is consuming on your uh, Z environment. Uh, with the version 2.0 of ZDream, you will have the capacity to drill down on your Kix transaction and analyze per group of transaction uh, their consumption, their response time, and uh, the, the amount of transactions that were executed. So this will be the whole purpose of the version 2.0. And we are continuously working with early adopters or with uh, partners in order to provide additional value uh, on our existing uh, data. Right. Now, thanks for uh, adding that at the end there, Guy, that we, we are really interested in hearing uh, what people may want to do, and especially, as he said, uh, those early adopters of ZTrim. Uh, some of the things that we've been able to do recently were was feedback directly from those folks and saying, hey, we, you know, in our environment, we're really heavily dependent on this, and we were able to uh, incorporate those into the product. Okay. And that's all the questions we've we've gotten in. So that concludes today's webcast. We'd like to thank everyone, especially Craig Hilburn and Mark Perillo and the RSD team for attending the event today. This feature will soon be available on the SHARE website at SHARE.org.